ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Star Wars Weekend's host, the man with the freakish vocal range and free first names, James Arnold Taylor. Check out all of our other fantastic shows, but right now, I think we should get right to it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, are you pumped? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm asking all of you out there too, are you all excited? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars royalty. I mean, what can I say about this guy? I'm just gonna have to say, take a look at these screens. Star Wars Weekends. We are so grateful for you. And it's such a, an amazingly busy man. And to take the time to come here, this is great. So, uh, it's a vacation thing. for me, too. My wife is here, my three children are here, I have my mother in law, aunts, uncles, nieces, my probation officer. <laughs> Everybody's here. And, uh, you know, Nathan, my oldest son, was born when we were making Empire Strikes Back. So he has a British passport. And uh, it's easier for him to get into the country than it is for me. <laughs> now, you know, let me ask you, uh, have you been working on anything lately? <laughs> <laughs> There's this little independent low budget picture, <laughs> and uh, it's the it's the life story of George Lucas, and I'm up for the title role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So okay, a little bit more like George. You know, here's the thing about all of that. In my opinion, Mark, yeah. is when I saw Star Wars the first time, it was magical. 
It was magical for so many reasons, but one of the reasons is I didn't know everything about it. I went right. in and I just was taken up in the magic of all of it. And that's what I am looking forward to about episode seven, is just having that time where I, I try to just shut away. So I, I want to talk to you about your career. I want to talk to you about Star Wars 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk to you about how it all began. So uh, if you don't mind, we're going we're gonna to skip over all that because I want to be excited. I know some of you want to be surprised when you see this movie as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So before we leave that subject uh -huh. here, uh, of, of keeping secrets, <laughs> it's not a game. You know, it's not like we're trying to annoy the fans or, or drum up uh, interest. You know, it's like trying to plan a really big, elaborate surprise party. And you're, you're trying to decide what food you're going to get and who's going to decorate it and, yep. you know, where you're going to have it and so forth. And it's, you know, it's mostly so we can maximize your eventual enjoyment of the picture. And we want you to see it at the movies, not on the internet. Yep. And so it's very nice. There are blue meanies out there. There are blue meanies out there that are going to try and show you every creature, and, and God knows they'll probably try and leak the script and, and, and put it online. So if I were you, I'd do that. No, 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 no. Right. Because I've seen, I don't know about you, I've seen trailers where you go, by. I think I've seen the whole movie. You know, you want some surprises. That's all. Okay, well, okay. we're done with that. We're done with that. Thank you, though. Thank you so much. Now, Back and I didn't rub my beard fast enough. I shaved, the last day I shaved was the day after the table read, a, April 29th. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and, and so the table is pathetic. This is six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep going, man. I think it's a nice Obi Wan. All right. So well, let's go back to the beginning of your Star Wars event. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Tell us about the audition process for this. Did you even know the name of the movie? What was? What, how did it all begin for you? I had a friend. Uh, I had just done a series called The Texas Wheelers for Mary Tyler Moore Productions, and it was canceled. I was sort of depressed about that, and my friend Robert England, who was Freddie Krueger, hey, hey, hey. yep. yeah. 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 he goes, have you been out through that George Lucas movie? I said, what is it? Because I knew him from American Graffiti. He said, I think it's like Flash Gordon or something. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you don't get to see the script, but um, it's, it's all set in space and everything, and I said, are you up for it? He said, I didn't get it. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> So he wouldn't tell me about it until he was sure that he had been <laughs> passed over. What about that's a movie, though? Huh? <laughs> you know, you know like, actors are like that. Actors are like that. But when I think about it, I think Robert must have been up for the Han Solo character. I don't know. Yeah. But I went. Out, I went. Out, I got, told my agent. I said, I really want to go out on this thing. And uh, I think we knew it was called. I think they called it the Star Wars. The Star Wars. But, uh, it was a what they call a cattle call, which means a room just filled with actors, and it was twofold. Brian De Palma was seeing people for Carrie, the Stephen King horror film, yeah. and George was seeing people for Star Wars. In the same space. In the same space. So when you went in at a table with George and, and Brian, <laughs> and George never spoke. It was Brian that did all the talking. I didn't know. I thought maybe George was Brian's assistant, you know, <laughs> because I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. And basically, they just talked to you, you know, where are you from? And I said, well, I'm in the middle of seven children. My dad was in the Navy. And, you know, we just talked for about five minutes. And basically, what you're doing is you're, you're showing them you're either checked on a list of let's see him again or you're crossed off because you don't do any performing or anything. You just talk a little bit and it's next, next, next. And how'd you do? Well, I was told that, you know, Robert said that, uh, and my agent said, one of the characters is a farm boy. So he's probably not really sophisticated. He's probably not all that bright. <laughs> <laughs> the role I was born to play. <laughs> you know, he should probably look freshly punched, you know, slightly <laughs> bewildered. Uh, but, you know, so he's trying to go in and, and, and be genuine and just be who you are, but you know you have no idea of what they're looking for. And then months later, maybe yeah. six weeks later, I got a, a, a six-page scene in the mail, yeah. and that was the first time I'd seen any material. Right. And I went in and I did a video taped uh, 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 screen, screen test, test. Screen test yeah. with Harrison, 
And I got really excited because I knew Harrison Ford. Harrison, who's that? Harrison, Harrison Ford, yeah. Oh, come on! Uh, <laughs> and I knew him from American Graffiti. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty great. Now look at this. See, I love the, the all these great candid shots. You all look like you're having so much fun. Right. right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Fire Sale. That was Fire a, Sale. That was a movie that came out the same summer as us from... Um, uh, my, Alan Arkin directed that, yeah. and uh, I later worked with Alan. He directed me off Broadway in a production of Room Service, and he's still mad at Star Wars because he's convinced that it killed Fire Sale. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Yeah, you know, what's oh. my problem? You know? yeah. With Fire Sale, had a couple of spaceships in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> Would have been great. No, but uh, so we went in. I read this the screen the screen test. Yeah. And I'm thinking, is, is this like serious or is it a parody? It seemed to me like it could be like Mel Brooks or something. Remember some of the lines you have? Here's, here's the thing. Now, I've done this before. I, if, bear with me if you've yeah. done this before. But there's a line that was in the screen test that's not in the movie. And I've all these years later, 163 years later, I still <laughs> remember this line. Because it was, we're in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, and there was no Wookiee. It was just... On solo, and he was like, "Hey, kid, you know, I did my part." Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just trying to approximate sort of that minimalist, low energy that Harrison does. I mean, he's leaning into everything he says because it's like he's hypnotizing you at the same time he's, <laughs> uh, you know. So, you know, you're going back to, uh, you know, so. And my, but anyway, he was saying that we're turning back. And I said, and my, my character says to him, but we can't turn back. Fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is any greater than it was on Akira or Salas. And what there is is most likely directed towards a large scale assault. And I went, who talks like this? <laughs> I mean, you can diagram that sentence. Yeah. Let's let's break it down. Fear is their greatest defense, meaning whatever that. Because he says that's no moon, that's a space station. That's why he wants to turn around. And, and regarding that space station, I say, but fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is any greater than it was on Apple or Sullust. Two made-up names of little asteroids, that I get. <laughs> sure. And what there is, is most likely directed towards a large-scale assault. In other words, we're small enough in the Millennium Falcon to slip in because they're looking for big armadas. Yep. So, I mean, it made sense when I broke it down. But I remember saying to George, I said, this is like kind of in fun or... And he, you know, he was like, well, oh, um, oh. Well, let's just do it and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Which I later learned from experience when George says that, it means let's do it now and never talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like that. He, I think one of the reasons he is successful at what he does is he casts people that are so close to what he wants that he doesn't have to go in there and do major, you know. He gets the natural energy that they exactly. have. Exactly. The and so, I mean, I'd be like on the Death Star, I'd be saying, wait a second, shouldn't I be picking up on the princess kind of, <laughs> you know, bantering back and forth with Han Solo? Or shouldn't I notice the, the robots are making wisecracks and so forth? <laughs> he goes, you know, well, it's just. Uh, and I said another thing, uh, pronunciation. Is it Leia or Leah? Is it Han or Han? Is it Chewbacca or Chewbacca? And he goes, uh, I don't care, just <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you mean, you mean there's no right way to say these names? But, uh, well, it's regional. Yeah. <laughs> I actually always kind of appreciated that about him, though, because he did that in Clone Wars quite a bit, where we would all say it, and he's, he let us all say it differently because he thought that that's more real. Yeah, and it is. It really is, you know? I know, because some people say Nevada, and people say Nevada, so, uh, you know, it's like, basically, it's don't sweat the small stuff. So, now, getting back to all this great chemistry that you guys had, I mean, we do have some, some great shots. Was it, was it always fun on set? I mean, it's always, from what I see and from what I hear from y'all, it seems like you guys really did have a good time. Look at that! We're going into space! <laughs> I can't remember laughing as much on anything Really? As, as this movie. I mean, it was just wicked fun. I mean, we had to take it seriously. We had to really sell it in terms of like, if you don't believe it, then nobody's going to believe it. Yeah. But just to get it all out of our system, 
we goof on it when when the cameras weren't rolling. And I mean, I was reminded of that because I saw this documentary footage of us uh, uh, making our way back to the Million Falcon when when Alec Guinness gets cut down. Yeah. And and that's a really traumatic moment for it Luke. Is. But like I said, it was like putting put put out on the biggest playground with all you know props your own toy robots and laser i mean how could you not have fun yeah if you can't have fun doing that then you're in the wrong movie and i do remember the swing across you just had a picture up of yeah a carrie and i i was looking forward to that all week long i said two days doing the swing across doing the swing across you know tomorrow and we were both in harnesses the way you would you know be harnessed up for peter pan sure so we were all on wires, and then they had our two harnesses linked together, carrying them. Yeah. And so we're ready to go, there we are. And uh, what I didn't realize was that they had at least four cameras going, in my memory, maybe three, I'm thinking it's four. And normally in the movies you do it over and over, and you might spend all day doing that. We swung across. You <laughs> weren't that good. Just we just swung across like once, and they go, camera, it's good. Come to you. All right, moving on. That's it. What? What a chick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said, that is so. And so I, I did them a little mini tantrum, and they said, all right, we'll get Terry on harness. If Mark wants to fly, we'll fly. Him. <laughs> so did you get to go with him? They flew me all around. <laughs> I was like, really, you have like a mean way of <laughs> Now, speaking of all these wonderful people that you've worked with, let's do it. Let's, I think it's time for a Star Wars Weekend's double take, don't you think? Yeah. Yep, let's do it. It's a Star Wars Weekend's double take with Spitzky. All right. So, Mark, let's, let's uh, for time's sake, let's talk the cast for a bit. I'm going to give you a name, and you give me a sentence or a word. Okay? A okay. sentence or a word per person <laughs> is to sum them up and your time with them. Okay? okay. Here we go. First one. Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness. Ultimate gentleman and ultimate actor. I just adored Alec. He had a wonderful sense of humor. He loved... I mean, of all things, you know, I'd be asking about the Lavender Hill mob or the Lady King. No, no, no. I want to talk about the all. I said, what do you want to hear about a soap opera and a dog food commercial? <laughs> I, mean, I had done nothing that he would have seen. But he loved my lack of pretense. He loved the fact that he loved American humor. Yeah. And uh, I remember one time his wife was sketching a mosque when we were in Tunisia. And this was taboo uh, to, to the, the religion there. And uh, a, a local official realized what she was doing, and just, and she he grabbed the paper and tore it up, and Lady Guinness was startled, and so was Alec, and he turned to me and he said, who was that? I said, I had no idea, unless it was a local art critic. <laughs> <laughs> I see, he loved that, yeah. because it was unexpected. They, they, they liked it too, it and, and that was the longest sentence I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next one. I failed this next one. <laughs> so I'm not going to now. That's what we're going to get from now on. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Harrison Ford. Nice. <laughs> Good. Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. Very nice. <laughs> you can give us more than two words. Come on. Well, as you all know, Carrie is just wickedly funny. I mean, yeah. uh, an incredible wit, and uh, you know, her mother is just a legend in, in cinema history. And yep. uh, for those of you that don't know, Debbie Reynolds. Debbie yeah. Reynolds. Oh! Debbie Reynolds. Oh! Debbie better than that. Oh, yeah. I'm really a wonderful actress. I don't think she gets the credit she deserves because she sings and dances. You yeah. know, and they somehow think that that makes her less of an actress. But if you see her in how the West was won, or that's the least thing where she played Liberace's mother. Pretty great, yeah. I mean, I didn't even recognize her. Yeah. She was a wonderful actress. She okay. loved to laugh, I loved to laugh. Harrison is also very funny. He's yeah. very, very witty. 
and uh, I wish you would do more comedy. Yeah. Well, I'm the canine, the little maker, you know. <laughs> you, if you get some time with him, uh, it's pretty funny. In the near future, if you get time with him, maybe you can encourage him to do that. Um, <laughs> if you get time with him anytime in the near future, you can encourage him to do some comedies. Uh, uh, really? Yeah, really. Okay, yeah. Irving Kirshner. Brilliant. And, and really uh, in tune with the mystical aspects of... See, now where George really didn't want to talk about things, Kirshner was an actor's director. He really loved talking about motivation and backstory and uh well there he is, there he is right there. There. as you say things it comes out right there it's, it's amazing disney magic i better not Frank? talk about my honeymoon hi <laughs> <laughs> oh we got a great show for you tonight uh, frank Hans. frank Hans. oh frank yeah. uh, well i grew up being just so enamored of the Muppets. I mean, even before the Muppet Show, you know, they say, hey, Mark, uh, the Muppets should be on Ed Sullivan this Sunday, and, you know. Uh, so I was a huge, huge, huge fan. Yeah. And he couldn't be nicer. Again, he's a wonderful director, as he's shown uh, yeah. uh, over the years. But uh, uh, so personable, and that's Wendy. Yeah. You know, it was very lonely on the set because they were all underground. And I had a little earpiece, much like this one I have on today. And if I turn in a certain direction, I pick up radio waves. <laughs> so I'd be watching Frank for, oh, many years. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'd go, ooh, ooh, <laughs> daddy, you're a fool. I'm going, I'm in the Rolling Stones. Oh, there he is. I said to, to I, saw, I sort of laughed. You know, right in Yoda's face, didn't I? You do a pretty good Yoda. I think. Well, you know, know what happened is we all started doing Yoda. Everybody, you know, we'd, we'd break for lunch and the boom guy would say, to the commissary, you are going? <laughs> so everybody's talking backwards and talking like Yoda. And uh, Frank eventually said, you know, please, we, it was posted on the, on, the, on the call board, please stop doing Yoda because Frank's starting to do your version, yes. his version, yeah. of his version. It happens. So, and you have to stop that. But you know, they were really forthcoming in terms of letting me put the puppet on. I went up into Stuart Freeborn's uh, workshop when they were whipping up the phone to make Yoda. Well, we went down on Saturdays when we weren't shooting and worked all day with Frank. And uh, I just loved him. I mean, from the minute I set, set eyes on that Yoda, I said, um, he, 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 it just works so totally for me. I well, mean, here's the thing, and, and we had one other person that I was going to give a name for, we'll get back to, but your performance with Yoda, I think, is really what made us all believe him and believe in Yoda. It's, it's oh. I mean, so much about him, but because it's just the two of you, there was never a doubt that Yoda was alive. I mean, right. it seemed that the two of you had this special bond. You know? I held my breath and kept my fingers crossed because I said if we get one critic that mentions, even in a positive way, that Hamill works well with puppets, I said we're dead. <laughs> um, and Frank, I mean, that's sort of an insider. I mean, James being an actor himself would understand, but Frank actually said to me. Did it do something obscene? I think you were scratching it. So they were getting this great I sound. I can't get used to this facial fur. <laughs> uh, the Frank said to me, he said, look, you know, because I said to him, I, I tried working that puppet. It wasn't easy. I mean, yeah, yeah the mechanical ears and the, somebody was working the eyes, but in terms of just the way he manipulated the mouth and the way he could make the body sag and tilt the head when he was listening to me, because I would do it in the mirror, and of course, you know, with his decades of experience, I, it made me really appreciate what he brought to the performance, and I was talking to him one time, I said, you know, uh, thank goodness that they, because they toyed with the idea of making it a little person in a, oh, really? in yeah. a mask, and George at one point said, how about a monkey with a head on it? Uh, that would have been a different No, seriously. Well, you remember a band that they just dressed up an elephant, but he only had to be in a couple of 
you know, it didn't have to really carry scenes. <laughs> we didn't have to lift the next one. Yeah. yeah, but I've worked with some pretty uncouth actors, but never a, a spider monkey in a mask. That sounds like a recipe for a disaster. <laughs> Frank actually said to me, and I, this is one of my fondest and most proud moments, he said, if you didn't believe, no one would have believed. And he, he credited me much too generously with being a large percentage of how that thing worked. And I don't agree with him because, like I say, I didn't have to pretend to believe. I believed. You know, I just thought he was, from the moment, and even before he was, and by the way, he was always breaking down to the point where wherever you see Luke without Yoda, or if you see over Yoda's shoulder onto Luke, it's the dummy Yoda, because they run the main one up to Stuart's uh, office, and, or uh, workshop, and work on him. So most of the time, he was a piece of tape on a stick going, I can, I can be a Jedi. You know, like right here. There you go. But, but I can. I'm telling you, I can be a Jedi. <laughs> Just how we have to accept. <laughs> and then it's, it's bringing it's back memories. <laughs> you know, Fantastic yeah. stuff, though. It really is. Now, do you remember the first scene you, you shot? Do you remember that? It, for the very, of all? Of all of them. Do you remember that? Yes. The very first shot in the movie is me coming out of that igloo type dwelling <laughs> yeah. towards to buy the robots. And then I hear Aunt Beru, Luke. And I, you know, what's so funny was when I went over to that uh, crater and looked down, it was only this deep. When they did the reverse over my shoulder, it was miles away, 50, 100 miles away at a real hotel. And that was the lobby of a hotel. Yeah. So that's the magic of movies. You're, you pretend. <laughs> so as I was walking out of that little igloo house, yeah, yeah. they said, you walk about 10 feet, and then we act like someone's calling you. Because Sheila Frazier, who played Aunt Brew, she wasn't even on set that day. Uh, so who called it? Was it, was it George? Luke? No, no, he didn't like doing that. He didn't like doing that. He says, oh, you just walk around, I don't know, like, walk to around there and then pretend like uh, Aunt Brew's calling you. Because I knew in the script it was Luke, Luke. So I started walking around, oh, you know, then you just do it. Then you do it's it. It's all make believe. I mean, I've been doing this like when I can show you the same way. I mean, we used to play Zorro in the backyard yeah. or Robin Hood, or we go see a James Bond movie, and for days after we like, you know, going around, I was like, ding, 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 you know, sneaking around corners. You still weird. weird. I was a weird kid, you know. Do that uh, in session. Go do it. I've been doing the same way with voices. I remember the first yeah. time I ever saw Dracula. Yeah. And I want to know what, who talks like this. <laughs> Why does he talk like that? You know, See, now this gets me on. You're actually quite the impressionist. We've done quite a few voiceover uh, shows together. Right. I remember, you've already done a little Harrison, but there was a show we did where we were doing voice matches. I was doing like Martin Scorsese and you were doing Harrison Ford. <laughs> you was know you? who does great is, uh, I did Stuart Little and Michael J. Fox didn't do the series. Your Michael J. Fox is spot on. Oh, thank you. Well, wait a second, Doc. Whoa, you mean the same <laughs> time machine? Close your eyes and you're there. <laughs> Where I see it, Marty, if you're gonna build a time machine, you go hard, why don't you go some time? Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that's why I just, you know, that's why, if you ever see Comic Book the Movie, I directed this mock documentary at the, the San Diego Comic Book Convention, and it's filled with voiceover people. I didn't really have the time or the budget to really audition. People, I just know the wealth of talent there is in voiceover, and I went, oh, you know, it'd be perfect to play X, Y, or Z, and that's the way we cast it. It was a lot of fun, and thank you for, for letting me be in that with yes. you. It was a lot of fun. But let's let's do um, uh, let's do a little social media madness. Do you mind taking some questions from Twitter Not and Instagram all. and all of those? Can we do a little social media madness here, guys? What's hey, no. This is madness. Social media madness. Okay. Here's how this works, Mark. We asked people on Twitter to send us hashtag Ask Hamill. And okay. we got flooded with questions, and we've, we've chosen a few. Do you mind uh, answering some of these? Let's, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the first one here. Okay, it's, um, it says, what was your favorite scene to shoot in the trilogy? Boy, that's so tough, you know, your favorite scene. One of the scenes I kept looking forward to because I thought it popped when I read the script 
in a science fiction or fantasy movie, everybody's waiting for the monster. Now, you yeah. saw the Tusken Raiders and the Jawas to a certain extent. But I said, when we walk into that cantina, and it's just nothing but wall-to-wall -wall monsters, that really appealed to me. And so I was really, really looking forward to that one. But I already talked about how much I love the swing across. Yeah. I love the in the trash compactor. I mean, so many of these elements in the movie were right out of the kind of things that I loved when I was a kid. Tarzan yeah. movies and you know, swashbuckler pirate movies, cowboy movies, and it, it just seemed like a dream come true. I mean, I was a kid that read Famous Monsters magazine, yeah. built all the Aurora monster kits. Yeah. So I, mean, I was the one that would really get it. Hey, you guys, our faces are masks on the back of cereal boxes. I can't believe it. <laughs> and Harrison was hey, like, hey, I didn't get in this business to be a cereal box. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, we are. <laughs> I mean, I thought you had to be an athlete to become a bubblegum card. No. Uh, You're a I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a good athlete, athlete but I, 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 made, I made it onto a bubblegum card. You're yeah. so proud. More than that. Yeah, you've done pretty good, my friend. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at another one of these here. All right. All right, what do we got? Uh, okay, Raymond is asking, while filming the Wampus scenes on Hoth, how long did you actually have to hang upside down? Oh gosh, it was days upon days. What happened was we <laughs> shot it like one or two days main unit. Yeah. And then Kirshner and everybody moved on and they, that became a second unit shot. <laughs> Gary Kurtz did a day, Robert Watts did a day, I think Norman Reynolds did two days. And they, they left just, you hanging the whole well, time? Well, that was, of course, the joke. They'd go, okay, that's a break for lunch, and everybody would walk off. And go, hey, you guys. But uh, it's a wonderful way to lose weight, by the way. <laughs> because not only do you sort of lose your appetite hanging upside down, but uh, you don't want to disgrace yourself in any manner, shape, or form. So you really eat like oatmeal, and you know, yeah. you really watch what you eat. And people would come and lift you halfway. So the break. blood wouldn't completely rush to your head. But it just went on and on and on and on. And talk about flying. It's the same guy that flew us across when we were with the princess. But he had me in a harness and I was upside down. And that was what they call, we call it styrofoam over there. They call it polystyrene. Polystyrene. There you go. And uh, his name was Derek. But he had these marks on, you know, because I couldn't see him. He was somewhere behind the set. And he would preset where I was and where to drop me when I got the lightsaber and cut the stalactite down so I wouldn't crush myself. I just had to tuck my chin and take the brunt on my shoulders. Well, one day, I, apparently he would had a little brandy at lunch. <laughs> and okay. he mixed up his marks. And he still, when he, after one of the takes where I was down, he started bringing me up. And he didn't stop. I started breaking through oh, the collar and started on screen. Derek, stop! Stop! That's enough! <laughs> and it's snowing, all this polystyrene. And uh, yeah, I guess you had to be there. But, uh, <laughs> you know, speaking of being there, it was exciting. exciting. We had John Ratzenberger here yeah. last week. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> And you know, he was in Empire Strikes Back. Now, I don't know if you are aware that he was in a scene with you that was cut out. Have you seen this? I have not seen We've it. we just uncovered this. So let's just take a look at this. Oh, boy. If you guys, if you guys have it. Could you do a short dialogue between Luke and the Joker, where Joker tells me this is a story? 
not to put you on the spot or anything. Well, right? <laughs> Troy Baker. Troy Baker, very talented. Troy, yeah, he's on. I do this show called Regular Show. It's on uh, Cartoon Network. Regular Show. Yeah. Anybody know that? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm skips on Regular Show. Uh, yeah, you do that very kind of flip, but you're one of the most talented voice actors out there, and we all are always so privileged when you come in. So, this whole second kind of career. But you know what I what was great about the voiceover people? Because I didn't really get into it until the early 90s. I did something when I was a teenager. I did the animated version of By Dream and Sheen in the Larry Hagman role. How she didn't cut that out, you're going right back in the bottle. Uh, but, and Julie McWhorter was, was Jeannie doing an incredible Barbie Eden. And I, I worked with Larry Hagman, and when I told him that, I said, you know, I can't do you, but I, I played your part in the uh, cartoon version. Now, that would have been like 72 or 3. Okay. And then I didn't work again in voiceover. Uh, by the time I did it again, it was Joker. And you know, I didn't know about voiceover. Agents who oh, really? specialized yeah. just in that because I got Jeannie through my theatrical agent. But well, all I, the reason I'm bringing this up is when I went to do my first voiceover jobs, mm -hmm. I knew who Rob Paulson was, I knew who Jeff Bennett was, I knew who Chess McNeil, Maurice LaMarche. Now let me explain to them. Frank Rob Welker. Paulson and Maurice LaMarche are Pinky in the Brain. Anybody know Pinky in the Brain? <laughs> Paulson is from the Animaniacs. Well, they're all from the Animaniacs. Trust me, Neil. I mean, these but are I would, giants in voiceover. Yeah. I would, I would. First of all, I'm a huge animation fan. I've been all my life, and I would tape these things on Saturday morning. I watched with the boys and my daughter as they were growing up. But I would freeze frame on the end credits, and because I wanted to know who played all these characters. Have you ever tried to read end credits without a freeze frame? Oh yeah. <laughs> And there's yeah. like 60 names, you can't see anybody. Yeah. So what I think they were flattered that I knew who they were. I mean, I knew who you were before I met you, so... Come on. Uh, <laughs> who am I, Mark? Come on. But no, it's okay. true. I still remember seeing that uh, episode of the Walt Disney Show where they, they showed uh, Clarence Nash doing Donald Duck. <laughs> it was the first time, maybe six or seven, where I go, oh, wait a minute, yeah. There are actors that go in and and voice cartoons. That's right. It. And now I'm going to do a shameless plug for my show. And because if you want to know more about that, you can come back and see Obi Wan and Beyond later. But <laughs> I do. You should see it. Oh, man. Hey, uh, honestly though, uh, we really appreciate that you are such a lover of voice acting. But you are a tremendous voice actor, and I just I thank you because the first project we ever worked on, I played the kid version, and you played like you did this great like. Old man, it was just a narration. You were narrating, so we played the same character. And it was, it was, is that right? Yeah, it was many, many years ago. On, on an animated oh, on film. I think it was called um, Arrow Troopers. Arrow, Arrow, Arrow Trooper. It was it Arrow Troopers? Yeah. So that was fun. So we played the same role. That was my first time working. Well, with you know, I fun. finally, after all those years of uh, being asked, I said, okay, I'll do a, a Clone Wars, and so I did it one episode. One episode. Yeah, and they said, don't. Or don't talk about it, or don't mention it. I said, oh, okay. 
Three years later, I mean, it's been on, it's gone. It's, uh, yeah, it was on Netflix, it's in season six, <laughs> and, and you are fantastic in it. Was it? Was it never on Cartoon Network? It was not on Cartoon Network. It is on, on Netflix. You can see it now. And you play Darth, Darth Bane. Bane, yes, exactly. And, and the reason I said it is when they said, oh, is that him? That's him. Because they said, uh, I yeah. said, what do you want me to do? I said, I kind of want to make it special, so find something that's fun. And uh, they had me at Darth. Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought, Darth anybody's got to be interesting. We wanted you on that show for so many years, and it was fantastic that you actually got to play that and Tom Kane did that it. Okay. Because Tom Kane is fantastic. Yeah, right. Hey, you know, we are looking at doing something here that I love to do. It's time that we take you inside the Akbar's studio. Oh. <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. I'm going to ask you uh, seven questions. Okay. And if you can just give me the answers here, uh, the best you can, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how much we all learn about you in Star Wars, okay? Question number one. What is your favorite Star Wars film? It's like asking who's your favorite child. I love them all for different reasons, but if you really press me, I have to say Empire. Only because... Yeah! Only, only because it has so much more of the audience. It's much more cerebral. It's got elements that are really scary. That it's it doesn't end happily. Yoda's introduced. It's just a much more textured, interesting film. But I could make arguments for Jedi and, and the original oh, as well. That's good. That's good. Okay. I love all my children. <laughs> that's right. And, and we have two other days of this, so you can answer differently each time. Oh yeah, I'll switch answers tomorrow. <laughs> what Star Wars sound do you love? I love any language that you don't understand, whether it's the Jawas, <laughs> yeah, or the or the what do they call the Sand People? Yeah. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. There you go. Uh, uh, the Ewoks, any or R two is it's a symphony of emotions, and yet we have no idea what he's saying exactly. And I think that again is engaging your uh, your your imagination and you're filling in what he's saying and to 3 p.m. So okay, and you gave us a little hint here. What Star Wars sound do you not know? Okay, this is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> when I read the script for what happened in the Wampa Cave, I said, wait a second. They didn't describe what happens in the film. They said with a swipe of the lightsaber, he, he you know, uh, makes the creature draw back. Sure, I don't even know if they called it a wampa. You know, okay. a lot of times they wouldn't name these things until they made them into toys. Believe me. <laughs> we call it the medical droid, and we didn't know until after Kenner got his hands on it that it was IG-88. Yeah. So we call it the dustbin robot, the medical droid, uh, the ice creature, whatever it was. And I remember saying to them, I said, well, wait a sec, because the camera was here, and all I had to do was this with a lightsaber. Yeah. And, and I said, now, wait a minute, guys. This thing's just like a hungry bear. He's not evil. So I'm just like nicking his fur, right? I'm just scaring him a little, just giving him a little sting, like with a with a fly swatter. And they, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. You know, Luke would know because I said Luke loves animals. I mean, Alan Parker loves animals too, and I don't want to do anything that would be cruel or inhumane. Oh, don't worry about it. Cut to me in the theater a year and a half later. Not only do I cut his arm off, he comes down in slow motion, boom, and hits the deck. Yeah, so the sound that he makes when I cut his arm off. Okay. Just, I, I can't. I'm still so mad. Okay. Because <laughs> they tricked me. They tricked me. I specifically asked. I'm not going to hurt him, right? I'm just going to nick him. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, come on. Okay. James has a special effect. <laughs> okay. Question number four. What is your favorite Star Wars word? Wookiee. <laughs> Excellent. What character besides your own would you have liked to have been? Oh, you got some time on your hands? I don't, <laughs> know, like, I don't know who's playing this Darth Vader guy, but... <laughs> really? Ah! And I also awesome. thought of the humans. Who wouldn't want to be Han Solo? He's wisecracking, hey, he's mocking the forest, do you believe in that forest garbage? I mean, he was the modern voice of cynicism, yeah. which I think was a great release for the audience. They were able to accept a lot of the more corny elements of the movie because there was a surrogate making fun of everything for them. <laughs> yes. I think that was very clever. Very so true. everybody wanted to be Harrison. I did, I know. On that note, what character would you not like to be? 
Well, Princess Leia's kind of a stretch. <laughs> I mean, maybe in my slimmer days I could have pulled it off. <laughs> okay, and final question. Mark Hamill, is there anything you would like to say to your fans? Listen, guys. Over the years, we have been just, I mean, I for sure have been so moved at the amount of support and affection that you've displayed is to the point where I don't even think of you as fans, you're more like family. Uh, if, if you know, I mean that. I, I, I really mean that. I don't want to get too somehow here, you know, because I'll get all choked up, but uh, we are just astonished at the kind of, I call you UPFs, the ultra passionate fans. And if it weren't for you, I mean, we wouldn't be here. They certainly wouldn't be doing episode seven. Um, like I say, I mean, I, even to this day, I'm backstage going, is the, is the theater filled? You know, <laughs> the first thing I saw were three empty seats. I said, oh no. <laughs> My popularity is taking a nosedive. But you know, I, I can't thank you enough for, for all the support uh, over the years. And as I said before, Whoa.